Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee, 6 o'clock Eastern Time on this uh, Thursday, the 5th of July, 2018, and uh, we have a few things going on today, including a brand new tropical storm, a tropical storm barrel, and I, I you know, I have to, I, I, I kind of have to chuckle about this because of the fact that uh, it's happened a number of times. I write a post about a tropical system, and I'm not in a position, you know, I can't upgrade things. I don't have all the tools that the Hurricane Center has. Uh, that's their job. So I try not to do their job. And it just, it's just, but it's funny because um, this morning I was looking at the satellite loop when I put up a post about the tropical wave in the eastern Atlantic, and this was at about 8 o'clock this morning, and I thought, you know what, this thing looks to me like it's got a low-level circulation uh, right now and okay so I write the post up as soon as I'm done writing the post uh, within about a, a half hour right before 10 o'clock uh, they uh, made it a tropical depression and then this afternoon uh, I, I wrote the post about them making a tropical depression at about 2 o'clock and posted it and I was looking at it and I said you know what kind of looking like this thing might actually uh, you know strengthen a little bit and sure enough they made it a tropical storm and and then I find out at the 5 o'clock advisory, when I look at it, um, it it's uh, top winds are 50 miles an hour. So I basically waited for them to do what they needed to do before I wrote my stuff and, and, and posted the, uh, I'm gonna, it's going to come up on, on the website. It's already up on the website, but uh, it'll, it'll be uh, publicized on uh, Facebook and a few other places uh, after 7 o'clock tonight. But no matter, it's just like, it's just one of those, frustrating things with regards to um, uh, sometimes when you work in the world of weather, you just finish uh, doing something and uh, a warning changes or a watch changes and uh, you have to uh, bounce accordingly. So let's uh, go to Tropical Storm Barrel and let me emphasize here that with respect to this and with respect to um, the system that's off the southeast coast of the United States, really don't see anything happening here. This is courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com uh, Levi Cowan uh, if you uh, in fact I'll, I'll, I'll do this in a second uh, just to show you uh, how, how, to, how to access this but uh, he's got the satellite loops there the close up satellite loops and just to show you how remarkable this storm is this is 10 degrees north okay and this is 12 degrees north this is 120 nautical miles. This tropical storm is incredibly small. It is it is minuscule, and uh, oftentimes in in situations in the past with systems like this that are very very small, they tend to sort of live inside their own environments, even though the surrounding environment may be rather hostile. And and in fact, with respect to this system, uh, there's a lot of dry air uh, around it. Uh, to the north especially, but it's kind of created its own little world and it's holding uh, together quite well. And the Hurricane Center, as I said, has actually strengthened top winds to uh, 50 miles an hour. However, uh, the bottom line is that, uh, yes, it could wind up actually strengthening a little bit more uh, as it moves westward. It's moving westward at a fa fairly steady clip of about 16 to 17 miles an hour. Uh, but uh, at some point, uh, it's going to start running into hostile conditions. It looks like the easterly trade winds are rather strong, and this thing may start accelerating westward, so you'll probably wind up with some kind of shearing going on that will tend to rip this thing apart. And every single global model that's out there weakens this to an open wave over the weekend as it approaches the Leeward Islands. I, I, I don't see any reason to argue against that. Uh, this is not... Uh, a situation where um, you know you're dealing with perhaps models uh, uh, differing on the strength of the wind shear. The only thing that might cause this to hold together a bit longer is the fact that it is so tiny that it is sitting uh, in its own environment. Uh, also, this is out in the eastern Atlantic, and we've been talking about the fact that the ocean water temperatures there are have been running colder than average, and and they continue to do so. But colder than average. And cold enough to and warm enough to sustain a, a tropical storm are two different things. And uh, yeah, the water's colder than average, but it's still warm enough to sustain uh, a tropical storm. Whether it could sustain something beyond that is <clears throat> is, is is probably unlikely uh, right now. Uh, 
but it won't be unlikely uh, <coughs> when we get uh, to uh, late July uh, and August. But uh, this is the season's second tropical storm, and by the time I said as we get to the weekend, uh, it is likely uh, to be uh, gone. Uh, now, we also have uh, the system that is off the uh, coast of uh, Florida, well east of the Florida coast and southwest of Bermuda. And uh, I'm showing it to you on the enhanced, uh, but I do have, actually I did have it. Um, give me one second here, folks. I'm going to try and bring up the uh, Hurricane Center's uh, view of all this. It'll just take me a moment. And we can take the, their Atlantic satellite uh, view there we go Atlantic US Atlantic coast and I want to show you if you look closely on the northwestern fringe of this there actually is a weak low-level circulation uh, that is turning there you, can, you see it there it's very very small but there are hardly any thunderstorms around that low-level circulation there are there's convection as you go east and southeast of the, uh, the that, that little center there uh, but uh, you don't have anything around the center, and this is what uh, prevents this, you know, from being uh, labeled as a tropical depression or a tropical storm, uh, among other things. You're probably not even strong enough winds. But also notice to the west, you could still see the turning of that upper low. There's a cold upper low off the southeast coast of the U.S. It's fairly evident here. You see the counterclockwise turning of the clouds, and this thing is getting basically steered around that. So look for this to move uh, northwestward and then all upstream and I'm not sure why I, I got to find out why it is it the geography shifts on these pictures but the bottom line is if you look upstream where you see the showers and thunderstorms developing across the Great Lakes that's the next cold front so even if this system were to develop to develop uh, the next cold front will be right on the coast during Friday afternoon so it's going to do one of two things with this if we have an intact system it could kick it out to the north and eventually northeast out to sea no no issue or it may just wind up the frontal zone may wind up just absorbing all this so I really don't think this is going to be a factor even though the Hurricane Center does rate this uh, as a 40 percent chance of it becoming a, uh, a tropical uh, depression uh, over, or a tropical storm over the next um, uh, 48 hours, uh, over the next three or four days. I just don't see it, but you know, you never know. With that low level center there, you could always get a flare up of thunderstorms around it and you wind up with something that needs to be upgraded. Now, I want to get into the uh, upper air going into the long range as uh, we are continuing to see this idea of a trough in the eastern part of the United States coming into play. And indeed, that is the case. It's going to bring in a really nice shot of Canadian air for the weekend and get rid of this heat and humidity. Notice that that trough lifts out and then another one comes in, although um, it's not a strong one uh, for later Tuesday. But the upper high is, uh, to the west, uh, is from the Ohio Valley westward. So there will be hot weather not that far away from the northeast, but uh, there's enough of a jet uh, in the northeastern part of the United States uh, to, um, to to prevent uh, uh, the, the Northeast, at least, from getting into prolonged heat. And I'm going to bring up now, uh, let me just, I'm going to switch, just hang in there, folks. Let's go to the paint box. And here you go. So uh, when we take a look at... Uh, it was supposed to go to the paint box. There we are. Now we're at the paint box. So I, I drew this earlier um, where uh, how the upper air shapes up. There's your upper ridge. I outlined it in purple there. And the eastern edge of the upper high is just about to the Appalachians and extends to, to just off the west coast. It's this kind of narrow... Uh, east, it almost looks like a cucumber there or a pickle, the uh, narrow east-west ridge. And we're on the edge of the westerlies, uh, the, uh, the, the base of the jet stream runs from about northern Wisconsin to eastern Ohio to northern Virginia. So this is enough at least to, to uh, 
Could it get very warm or even borderline hot for a day or two early next week? Sure, but there's enough of a flow to keep cold fronts moving along, and you can see there's a short wave that follows that. Uh, so uh, the overall pattern uh, is certainly suggestive of um, weather fronts that are going to be coming through uh, every couple of days when you have an upper air pattern like this. And we are at this point now into the middle part of next week, and you can see that there's another short wave at the end of the week, and then that lifts out, and then there's something a bit stronger as we go into the long, long range with this vortex that it kind of wants to form in Hudson Bay. So one of the things I would point out, and, and this is something that I think we're going to have to watch as we get deeper into the tropical season, uh, you can have a trough in the east, and that's all fine and dandy, but where in the east is really important, and is it sharp or is it broad? Um, I, I want to go back. I'm going to try and find out which run of that of the model it is. Oh, okay, it's from overnight, and I want you to take a look at this. Now, this is uh, this was the one of the overnight model runs, and this kind of illustrates, and I'm not. In no way am I predicting this. I, I'm just trying to illustrate to you when you have a tropical system uh, along the East Coast, what exactly do you need it to look like aloft in order to see if that storm is going to come up the East Coast. And this is actually uh, a pretty good example of the kind of upper air flow that you're, you would see in a situation where there was a tropical system and uh, this is this is how it would work so uh, here we have uh, the up the there's an upper high out in the Atlantic okay right here all right and when you follow the clockwise flow around the high so there you go it's kind of like this or at least this is the way the model envisions it so you've got a southerly flow here along the east coast around the periphery of this upper high offshore. And then you have this trough that drops down uh, to the west. Uh, looks like uh, it's, it's west of Chicago. But that actually feeds into that southerly flow counterclockwise around lows. Now let's suppose you have this, this uh, type of scenario and let's suppose that you have, and I'll put the letter H here. Um, to, I'm sorry. You know what? Let's let's not because I already have an H. Let's 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 change that. So let's let's use the letter um, S uh, for a tropical storm or a hurricane. So let's say you have a tropical storm or a hurricane in a position like this, with a trough to the west like this and a ridge like this in the east. Uh, here's your alleyway, pretty much right up the east coast. This is how you. This is one of the ways that you could wind up getting uh, a storm move up the east coast. There aren't there aren't a whole lot of ways for storms to come up the east coast. This is why when uh, when I when I look at models, one of the rules that I use uh, is that with with the absence of a deep trough uh, in the east and west of the coastline. In the absence of a deep trough, it is very unlikely uh, to bring a tropical storm up the East Coast. There are a few instances where it could happen, but you really need this sort of deep southerly flow, and this is one way. Now, of course, we're looking at a model printout 16 days from now, and there's no tropical storm there to worry about or hurricane. I just wanted to kind of give you folks a, just a little bit of a... a, of a of a classroom lesson on what to look for if you're on tropical tidbits and looking at weather models and you're wondering why models do what they do um, look at the upper air and if this is when if we wind up with something if we wind up with a pattern like this deep in August and September and you have a storm out there and that's the other thing you could have this but if you don't have a tropical storm uh, around uh, then there really isn't anything to worry about uh, so uh, just just remember that you, you got to have the tropical system there in in order for uh, something to happen. So if there's no tropical system, uh, then there there are there are no worries and there are no issues. So uh, I'm going to come back to this map here. I hope I had uh, you know I was just double checking to see make sure I did the switching correctly because sometimes I do get 
um, a, a bit confused. I, I also, before we get into the short term, uh, the short range weather, I want to go to Europe because I did have uh, someone yesterday posted on one of the YouTube videos was talking about this sort of long term heat wave and drought that's been going on in parts of England. Uh, and uh, we're going to take a look uh, at that. Let me, uh, we'll start with the two meter temperature anomalies. Uh, and you, another day uh, with uh, above average temperatures here uh, in England uh, on the order of uh, five to seven degrees above <clears throat> uh, Celsius above average. Uh, these are uh, 2 p.m. temperature. I'm sorry, this is six, these are 6 p.m. temperatures. Um, and this is noontime, that's 6 p.m. Uh, going through uh, into this weekend. Still some really, really warm weather, very warm, if downright hot here, uh, going through the weekend into early next week. Uh, and it seems like it continues, but then there's a bit of a break. So let's see what's happening uh, with regards to the surface. And so here you have... Um, Actually, you know what? Better than that, let's let's uh, let's look at the uh, upper air because I think that's probably a bit that, that's that's a certainly more useful. And you, know, you do have a strong, very very powerful ridge in uh, West Africa there, pushing up into the Mediterranean. And you do have a you know deep upper low west of Iceland, a deep upper low in Russia and England, kind of stuck in the middle. And a big look at that big ridge that builds over the weekend. So some very hot weather here uh, coming for the British Isles uh, over the weekend to add to all of this. Also, probably not much in the way of shower or thunderstorm with that. Uh, and then as we go through next week, the ridge does break down. So that might finally put an end to this. And you start to get a few short waves coming in from off the Atlantic uh, starting uh, around, uh, looks like around the 12th, 13th. Uh, you start to see, well, there's, a, there's a pretty a decent system that swings in from Greenland and south of Iceland and right over England uh, as uh, we head into mid-month and, and the ridge in Africa uh, in, in the West African ridge that builds up into the Mediterranean gets suppressed to some degree and yeah so that's at least a, a change in the pattern looks to be coming for much of Western Europe uh, as we move into mid-month so uh, for those areas that have been hot and bone dry uh, this uh, uh, could be a bit of a game changer so uh, we'll see what happens with that now let's come back home and uh, let's focus on the next cold front that's coming through and we'll start from the beginning I think we can jump to the new um, the new GFS and here we are this is for this evening and by the way, you can see that there is a closed low off the southeast coast of the U.S. with that disturbed weather that's east of the Florida coast. It's very weak. And there's the cold front that comes through on Friday. That's a 1031, hop, a 1031 millibar high in northern Michigan. That is a very strong high for this time of year. I, that's kind of pushing the envelope of the upper end of the range. You don't often see highs that strong coming down. This is a pretty solid push of cool, dry Canadian air. And by the way, um, it, 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 during this weekend, uh, in, in summers, when you come out of a heat wave like this and you get one of these fresh Canadian air masses, the origin of that air mass is up somewhere in central Canada, you can actually smell the scent of Canadian pines in the air, believe it or not. Uh, the frontal boundary settles uh, down along coastal North Carolina and then extends it back, back through Georgia and Alabama and into Louisiana. So that's where you're likely to see some showers and thunderstorms. Those of you that have been dealing with the heavy rains that have been occurring for weeks from Virginia on uh, westward, uh, <clears throat> north of 35 degrees, 36 degrees north, will catch some of this dry air. This dry air push does uh, get uh, fairly far to the south. But the high goes out, and we're going to start to warm up again and turn more humid as we go into Tuesday. But then there's another front that comes down, and this is the thing. With this troughing in the east, even though we may not be very deep into that trough, we are close enough that we're going to get these fronts to come by. So at the, at the very least, uh, yeah, it, it can get hot for a day or two, but it's not going to get hot and humid for eight days in a row. It'll get hot for a day or two, 
and maybe humid for a, a solid day, then a cold front comes by, the dew points lower a bit, the pushes behind it don't look especially impressive, but at least by pushing the front through, you can bring the dew points down for a couple of days and cool it off a bit. Uh, then you'll just go through the same thing all over again. Uh, we uh, bring one front through, uh, and then another one approaches on Friday, and then that goes through, and then another front uh, early next, early the week that follows, and on and on it goes. If you're going to start to establish a trough in the east, you're going to start. You're going to see these weather fronts coming through every three days, or every three or four days or so, uh, which effectively cuts the cuts any developing heat wave off uh, at the pass. Uh, we, you know, I got to tell you that this particular one, from the standpoint of heat waves, there have been uh, the, the heat wave far worse than this, far worse and far more oppressive. Uh, the humidity was just exceptionally high with this. It was it, the humidity was, I think, the bigger issue uh, because the, uh, ex, the ex, Sunday was the hottest day in the stretch for most for most of the area, and uh, after that, it kind of calmed down a little bit from the standpoint of temperatures. Uh, some areas in New Jersey, by the way, seeing their seventh consecutive day of uh, temperatures above ninety, while there were other areas that couldn't even put. Uh, uh, more than two days in a row of uh, temperatures above 90. So it really depends on where you are, at least in my neck of the woods from eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England. The severe weather risk tonight extends uh, just inland of the coast uh, through upstate New York, uh, back through Pennsylvania and the northern areas of the Ohio Valley through Indiana and Illinois. Looks like the heaviest activity on the radar as of 622 occurring uh, in uh, parts of western and northwestern Indiana to about sh uh, just east of Chicago and then uh, cutting Illinois in half uh, north of St. Louis. We also have a marginal risk along the central Gulf Coast uh, from uh, the Florida pan, the western part of the, well actually from uh, the Alabama Gulf Coast into southeast Texas and in another area of marginal risk up in the central and northern Rockies. Parts of Colorado uh, have been getting pounded with some big thunderstorms uh, lately and uh, looks like there might be another round of some big thunderstorms late this afternoon or this evening uh, up into the northern plains. One other thing I want to mention uh, with respect to um, tomorrow, and that is that, uh, uh, let's call it a preemptive flash flood watch has been posted for much of West Virginia, parts of northwestern Virginia, southeastern Ohio, across a good chunk of Pennsylvania except the northwest and much of the northeastern part of the state, uh, much of central and western New Jersey and northeastern New Jersey, but not the southern part of the state and not the north northwestern corner. And that flash flood watch extends over Long Island, New York City, southern parts of the Hudson Valley, and southern Connecticut, and also for southeastern New England. And uh, the problem is that over the last week or so, there have been some areas... Uh, that there have been clusters of thunderstorms that have hit some areas particularly hard with some very heavy rains. And yet, on the other hand, there were areas not surrounding those areas that got hit hard that got very little at all. So uh, I, th I think that this is kind of preemptive on the weather services part. Uh, the rainfall amounts tomorrow, uh, some areas, if you get into one of these strong thunderstorms with the cold front, could certainly exceed two or three inches. Uh, but it's going to be, uh, as usual with this, this type of stuff, kind of an uneven distribution uh, with regards to um, the rainfall. And uh, with respect to the weekend, uh, I am so looking forward to, you know, I probably should show you, uh, hang on, give me a sec here. Um, I'm going to bring bring it back up. Just watching the time. Let me come back to the weather models again. And then I'll come back to the board and we can talk about this. So we'll, uh, we'll go a little bit close up. And the heat wave is going to break for the Midwest as well with this air mass that's coming by. In fact, it's probably better if I go to the wider region here. And you uh, will start with the temperature anomaly here. Uh, this is Saturday morning. All of this area below average in temperature. Let's go back. Here's Friday. Well, here is um, uh, this evening. And you can see that cool push through the northern plains and into the western Great Lakes. That's the cold front that's coming. 
Uh, one last day of above average temperatures for part of the northeast and the coastal mid-Atlantic. And here we are for Saturday morning. Wait. Oh, God, silly me. Oh, boy. I take that back. Sorry. <laughs> it always pays to kind of look at the time on the map, Joe. So I knew something didn't look right. All right. So here we are for Thursday, okay? So we're above average, obviously. So now by Saturday morning, uh, we're looking at a large area of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Northeast uh, below average. And here is the daytime. Look at the extent of the below average temperatures Saturday afternoon going all the way down uh, into the southeastern part of the United States, uh, down into the Gulf Coast, and down through Texas, and of course all through much of the Ohio Valley and uh, the Midwest. And here we are for Sunday, and you, we kind of start to moderate a little bit on Sunday, but still much of the areas as you go south are going to be below average because that's where the frontal boundary sets up. And also, uh, with the below average uh, temperatures, probably uh, the greater likelihood in areas to the south that you could wind up uh, with uh, shower and thunderstorm activity uh, with uh, some, some heavy rainfall. Uh, not that it's wi widespread shower and thunderstorm activity, but uh, the, you are going to get some pretty decent pop-ups. Going into next week, you know, here's your warm-up Monday and Tuesday, and then your next cold front. Uh, Again, not as powerful a punch behind it. Uh, you can see the anomalies are just kind of some places a little above, some places a little bit below. Uh, but at least from the standpoint of the uh, air, air uh, just as it's about to turn really humid, you get a nice uh, little shot of air that uh, takes the dew points down uh, just a little bit. So now let me come back, which is not letting me. That's not nice. There we go. So we can say goodbye to the maps. Say hello to me. Bring me up front and center here. And then I will come to the board and talk to you guys. Nice to have everybody on board tonight. Um, the uh, tropical systems always seem to draw a few extra people, uh, whether they are uh, destined for land or not. So it's good to see uh, you folks here. Uh, so there is going to be, uh, from either of those two systems, just to repeat, uh, there, there are no landfall issues here. I, I, I uh, believe that both systems are not going to be um, uh, a, a, a problem here. Um, uh, let's see. So Tim Day has a bad feeling about the Gulf uh, latter part of the hurricane season, and I would like to wonder why you're saying this. Uh, it's been very hot and dry over East Texas, the exception being Houston in the last few days. Uh, so I'm just been, kind of be curious as to, you know, how, you know why you think that. Uh, lots of thunder today, uh, Timothy Veltman uh, says. The storms came through. Uh, the work site is a downpour, really fired up, and you always miss out. Well, you know, some of these things do get strong, uh, Mr. Veltman. Maybe it's good that you miss, you, you, you miss out. T-Bear... Um, Another hot one today for you as temperatures broke 90. We had a lot more sun and blue sky here today. It was really a tropical Florida sky. J.S. Sweetie, love the world. Words, cool Canadian air. As do I. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, the June pattern, Alex Bond. It kind of looks like the June pattern is coming back, really. Um, just running through everybody's. Uh, Ocala, Florida, doodle, doodle fingers there. 101, Mirtha Gunter, Andrea John uh, from Trinidad. Uh, nice to see you uh, here. You won't. I don't think you have anything to worry about with respect to barrel. Uh, it, it's going to start moving more west northwest with time anyway, and it is going to weaken. It's very very tiny. You may have, you probably already saw on the satellite loop I showed you earlier how uh, how small uh, that system is. Uh, barrel fizzles fizzles uh, fizzles out. Uh, Priscilla Mayu. Uh, over the weekend, before it gets to the, it'll fizzle out probably before it gets to the to the uh, uh, leeward islands. Uh, Aaron Raybear, there's a lot of dry air that's evident on the satellite uh, out in the tropical Atlantic. Uh, it's that's what made the development of the system rather surprising. But it's because it's very very small. When you look at some of these small systems, the history of them is that they kind of basically live in their own little bubble world. So they 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 they, they uh, Beryl has kind of encased itself in a very, very small 
tight moisture field and even though there's all this dry air surrounding it, it it's sustaining itself by just kind of staying in this tropical cocoon of it, uh, that it's in uh, but eventually it's going to uh, break out of that and uh, strong winds uh, in the upper atmosphere are, go are going to take its toll and the fact that there isn't a single global model that shows this thing surviving I think uh, really lends high confidence to the idea that uh, the system is going to um, fall apart. It's the wind shear, Zachary Gribos, that I think is going to kill this off uh, after tomorrow uh, because uh, the winds are, are fairly hostile once you get uh, west of 50 degrees west or particularly west of 55 degrees west and then it's going to accelerate so there's 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 easterly trades are going to be moving it along faster and faster uh, I really think this thing is going to just wind up falling apart it's it, and it, it, again it's remarkable how uh, absolutely uh, tiny um, this system is if you want just a, a little um, uh, note here I'll come back to this uh, Levi Cowan's Tropical Tidbits, tropicaltidbits.com is such a useful site. Of course, we would like to be able to move this to the top so I can show you. Uh, but I'm going to go to the home page of tropicaltidbits.com and this is what it looks like at the moment. When there are tropical systems, sometimes Levi will put a video here and absolutely watch his videos because you will learn, if you haven't seen him, uh, you will learn so much. But uh, up along the top, uh, you've got the menu, uh, current, current storms, recon, Air Force air, aircraft recon, satellite imagery, forecast models, and so on. So if you click on the menus, uh, you'll certainly pull down um, uh, the next page. But I want to just go back. So here's, these are your forecast models that are available to you. Uh, global ensemble these are specific hurricane models that are run when storms are uh, out there and you can see the list that you can have to choose from um, mesoscale small scale models but uh, back to the page I was on uh, one of the things if you're following these tropical systems that Levi does is if you go to current storms okay it's so easy because he has all on one page uh, the every tropical system that's running around or, or around the globe. So, for example, we have Tropical Storm Barrel, and you can see you know Hurricane Center forecast. He's got the weather model forecast, the ensemble uh, forecast, the intensity forecast graphics. In the Pacific, here's Tropical Storm Fabio that uh, he's got listed. Same thing. Keep going out in the um, in the West Pacific you have uh, Maria uh, Typhoon Maria with top winds at 110 knots uh, and uh, you can take a look at his uh, you know these storms if you're interested um, unfortunately I can't run the loop because oh there it comes uh, here is Typhoon Maria and again, this is all from tropical tidbits. Look at that well-defined eye in this uh, in, in in this typhoon uh, as it moves uh, northwestward. Uh, it's probably going to pass south of Japan and eventually uh, head into uh, China. Uh, but uh, this is a uh, almost a Category Three hurricane uh, that is out in the West Pacific. But again, all of this is very easy to access to have it all on one page. And if you are a hurricane um, buff uh, or uh, uh, an, an enthusiast uh, the, tropicaltidbits.com Levi Cowan uh, has it all there for you and I, I really owe him a lot of thanks uh, for allowing me to uh, use his maps on, uh, day by day it is very very kind of him uh, to do that and I really do appreciate it greatly uh, Nova Playa uh, says 2018 name list Alberto Barrel is going. He's got the whole name list for those of you who are uh, looking at it. And you can find that also on the uh, Hurricane Center's website, uh, nhc.noaa.gov. Uh, so you can you can uh, also check those out. All right, folks. Uh, I think it's time for me to say goodbye for the day. Uh, thanks for being here. That we did not do a Joe and Joe weather show last night because uh, we were Joe and I were both pretty wiped out. Uh, from the day for some odd reason so we just didn't have it in us and uh, Joe 
uh, has the day off today, so um, there won't be a Joe and Joe weather show uh, tonight, but there will be one on Friday. Uh, I will probably solo a show on uh, Facebook tonight at, uh, uh, let's figure, around 9.15 or so. Uh, so you can check that out on my Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. I usually don't upload my solo Facebook shows to YouTube. Um, I, I kind of save it for when Joe and I are doing the shows together. So unless something uh, spectacular changes between now and then, I'm probably just going to pretty much repeat what I had. So if you're interested, come back uh, to the Facebook show, come to my Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, and uh, otherwise, you'll have to wait for tomorrow's uh, YouTube live stream. And then tomorrow there will be a Joe and Joe show and that I will put uh, in the YouTube library. Okay, and just as a uh, uh, just to let you know, as always, uh, uh, there's a uh, an Amazon link uh, to the descriptor of this live stream and uh, to uh, the, the video descriptor when it goes into the video library. Uh, this is because we are a participant in the Amazon Services LLC Associates program, which is an affiliate advertising program that is designed to provide a means for my channel. Uh, to earn fees from Amazon uh, by linking to Amazon and its affiliated sites. You use that link to shop on Amazon. You get your stuff at the low prices that Amazon uh, uh, shows you. And uh, Amazon throws me back a little bit of coin. Uh, doesn't cost you a cent. I get a few cigars and everybody is happy. And yes, Nova Playa, Sarah uh, replaces Sandy. This is the list that we had uh, back in 2012 when we had Hurricane Sandy. So Sandy, of course, being retired. Uh, Sarah, S-A-R-A, -A, takes its place. Okay, folks, have a great evening. Uh, uh, enjoy yourselves this weekend with this beautiful dry air mass that's coming. We'll, uh, again, Facebook tonight, 9.15, solo, solo show with me. And we'll be back tomorrow night about the same time for a YouTube live stream. And the Joe and Joe weather show will also be back Friday night.